Hi, it's another screencast looking at the weak verbs as part of the Hebrew course taught at Nyack College Second Year Hebrew. But uh, of course, as it goes up onto YouTube, anyone is welcome to listen to it, to try and glean what they can from it. In this one, we're looking at the Ein Vav, Ein Yud roots. And by Ein Vav, Ein root, Ein, sorry, Ein Yud roots, what we mean right there is uh, referring to verbs whose second letter is equal to either a vav or a yud. We uh, call that, or in class, we refer to these uh, like this with the ein vav, ein yud, sorry, or the ein vav, we draw it like that. And that basically means the, the second letter is either an ein or a vav. Uh, for the most part, in this particular recording, we're going to look at the ein vav, and we're really going to look at a standard set of that particular. Uh, verb that particular weak conjugation as opposed to looking at all the intricate details please do turn to the course booklet here on pages 316 through to 328 which goes into further detail on the anomalies but this re re recording is really just to get you generally familiar with the concepts involved but certainly for the details and as you do your translations and as you you work through the verb sheets and the exercises that I'll be giving you, you will need to most likely either refer back to a full uh, verb sheet, which uh, will be provided or is provided for you, or go back to the course book itself or go to the handbook that you were uh, direct to at the beginning of the course. So with that said, we're going to begin as usual by looking at the Kal and we've given the perfect third masculine singular. And with this particular form, what we need to look out for, the big points are the Vav, the second root letter, or the Yud, uh, both cases are the same, is basically invisible, the third masculine singular. And this is going to be true for any of the vocalic or the non-suffixed forms uh, of the perfect. So you've got a long A for Kam, and this particular verb means to get up or to arise. With the perfect first common uh, singular, once we have a consonantal suffix, then the long A of the perfect shortens to a patach before we add the suffix on. And so this form would be the same, this um, vowel shortening would be the same for verbs such as kamti, kamta, kamt, kamtem, kamten, uh, if you like, all of those, or kamnu they'll have the short A once you add that consonantal suffix. And again, it's a consonantal suffix because it begins with a consonant, the letter Dav. With the imperfect, we've got Yakum. And here, the root, if you like, appears in the form of the long U with Machus Lectionis right here. That appears, but I also want to bring your attention to two other variations. This is the Ein Yud form, which I spoke about. Uh, at the beginning, and this is a, one of the variations. And instead of the uh, natural vav appearing in the ayin vav form, you have the yud with the long i, yasim. This one here is a variation, if you like, of the ayin vav, where instead of having an u sound, the long u, you've got the long o, yavo. And I bring this to your attention because uh, the root bet. Uh, vav Aleph is very common, meaning to come or to enter. Very common, so you have to look out for this form quite a lot. It's worth knowing, it's worth being aware of. The imperative form Kum, as we've seen in the book of Jonah, Kum Lech El Ninveh, uh, like this, with all three root letters involved. And the infinitive absolute is in Kom, with a long O as opposed to a long U, both with Matris Lectionis. Last of all, we've got the Vayiktol, which is important. I want to include this form because uh, the accent falls basically uh, over the Yud. And so this is actually read Vayakom, Vayakom, because that last syllable, as a result of the accent rescinding or moving back, that last syllable becomes closed and unaccented. And so the uh, Kamatz becomes a Kamatz Katan, and we say Vayakom. Notable too is the uh, ayin yud form, vaya uh, sim or vaya sem, and instead of having uh, the kamatz as the ayin vav does, this has the segol 
the short E sound and that is definitely worth noting because as you will see a little bit later on this form looks very much like the um, hyphial form uh, of the Vayik Tol but we'll see that in just a moment. The Nifal form, we've got the Nun of the Nifal with the long A underneath it, so it remains there. Nafots, and here we've got all three root letters which are available in the perfect. And this form appears basically with a vocalic or no suffix at all. We've got the third masculine singular Nafots. Once we add a uh, consonantal suffix as opposed to the vocalic suffix, that's when we have something very strange, something that we haven't come across before, and that is a connecting vowel. In this case, it's a long O with matris lexionis, and which gives an O sound, so we have nafutsota, nafutsota. And so we've got this, um, this first um, long O with matris becomes a long U, and that's just basically to help in pronunciation. And then you've got the... Um, vowel added here, the connecting vowel, the long O, once you add the consonantal suffix. So obviously that would be the same for the first common singular where you'd have something like nafutsoti, nafutsota, and so on and so forth. With the imperfect, the nun of the nifal that we see here assimilates into the gesh, and we've got the three root letters of the kaf, the vav, and the nun. Yakon, and the imperative form, as we've seen already with the imperative of the nifal, it's prefixed with a he, and this causes once again the nun to lose its vocalization and therefore assimilate into a strong dagesh into the first root letter. With the PL form, it becomes slightly different. There's no doubling of the second root letter. We have a new form, kind of a new form, which is called the polel, and with the pu'al, similarly the polal. And what happens here is that instead of uh, instead of doubling the second root letter, there's a multiplication or a doubling, if you like, of the third root letter. So we have, in this case, you've got the Lamid Lamid, and the root is actually Kaf Vav Nun, and instead of that we have the Kaf Vav, and we've got the Nun Nun, the Konen form. The Pua Polal form, or the passive form, is basically the same, except in this particular case, instead of having Konen, we would have Konan, Konan, and we would have that A instead of the E right there. So that's what it looks like in the perfect third masculine singular in the with a consonantal suffix then basically we're going to have um, a, an A vowel anyway whether it's PL or PL konanta and then with the imperfect third masculine singular yehonen and again you've got this cuff and doubling of the third root letter in every instance, so you should be able to recognize this uh, this verb form quite easily. We have the imperfect third masculine plural, yehonnu, and here we've still got the kaf and the double nun, as well as the vav on the end. When we've got the imperfect, when we turn to the imperfect second and third feminine plural, we have to be careful here because we've got the regular prefix, notice the shiva as well, which comes under the prefix of the imperfect, which happens in all of the PL forms. It's another way in which you can identify it. But we've got tehonena, and it should actually be a, um, uh, a kamat. I think I'll just draw that in here now, but we have got a little kan Ooh, kamat right underneath there, underneath that A right there. But we basically have, um, because we've got the doubling of the root letter according to the binyan, the polel or the polal, but there's also the addition, fill that in two, of an additional a, a na like this. You also have that addition too. And as a result of this, 
you can't have three nuns all together and so what we have is the strong dagesh in this second nun which represents the nun of the last um, uh, root if you like assimilating into the nun of the final part of the suffix for the second and third feminine plural the imper imperative form you're going to notice straight away looks like the perfect uh, konen and this happens you can, this this creates a could create a number of problems because once you see this form you need to begin to establish if it's a perfect or if it's an imperative and to tell you the truth as well you're going to notice as you go through the uh, verb tables more and more you're going to find that this imperative form is also the same as the infinitive construct and infinitive absolute so that one form will basically that this basically does quadruple duty uh, to help complicate the general picture with the participle again we've got the mem which indicates the participle for the pl pu'ar and hit pa'el so you've got the four mechonen and as i said before the kaf and the doubled uh, third root letter is going to be apparent on on all forms the hit pa'el i haven't given you a separate slide for because the hit pa'el is basically the same basically the same as the um, PL with the addition, if you like, of just color this in right here, there with the addition of the heat prefix. So you'd be left with heat conen, heat conanta, heat conantem, heat conanten, and so on and so forth. And this is re relatively easy to identify. So I haven't uh, given you the full conjugation, as I'd mentioned before. Uh, that can be found in the relevant uh, chapter if you need to look at it in the course textbook. With the hifil, we have hekim, third masculine singular. And in this case, the ayin vav, if you like, is swallowed up. The vav part is swallowed up in the yud of the hifil. So we have hekim. Now, if you see a form like this, we will know pretty much not to confuse it with a penun form because there's no dagesh in that first root letter. So when you see, uh, oh, you can only identify two root letters, there's no dagesh, then you can begin to think that maybe this is an ayin vav. Just like the nif as I mentioned before, once you're dealing with the perfect with a suffix in the hifil, and we are adding a consonantal suffix, then we also add this uh, connecting vowel, the long O with matris. So we have the form hakimoti, hakimoti. And we also have, because of the accent shifts, we also have a change to a short A right here whenever we add a consonantal suffix. So that's what that looks like. Uh, is a bit strange on the one hand, but strange is good because it can help you uh, identify and recognize the, the different forms. With the imperfect, we've got yakim. And with the imperfect, again, you've always got this um, uh, m m long I in the middle. So you'd have yakimu, you'd have takim, you'd have nakim. And it would always sound the same with a long I, even though this is an I in vav root. The imperative, we see a shortened form, that's when this long I is reduced, and we have hakem, hakem, it's shortened. The infinitive construct, it, that's a longer form, again, which looks much more like the imperfect third masculine singular, and usually you're going to find a prefix of some sort, um, a lehakim, something like that with the infinitive construct form. For the participle, just like the participle of the strong verb, we prefix it with mem. And it's also based, or very similar to the imperfect, with the long i. So we have the form mekim, mekim, mekima, mekimim, mekimot, would be the full conjugation of the participle. And the vayiktor, as I mentioned before, this is the hifil. What we see here is vayakem. 
and we've got the long e and this is uh, slightly different from the vayiktol of the perfect the kal perfect which was vayakom but it does look like the uh, vayiktol of the ayin yud you need to go back on that slide and take a look and you'll see it's actually identical and this is why i have emphasized emphasized very much that we learn vocabulary in the course because the vocabulary will really help to um, identify the actual forms of the verbs next we have the hof al which is a u much more of a hoof al but it's a who come if you like and in this case the second root letter is uh, non, not visible uh, at all, whether it's an ayin or a vav. So we have hukam, we have yukam in the imperfect, it's a u, and a short a, and a mukam in the participle. And I said before that the participles generally like this longer uh, vowel sound, longer a sound, to help distinguish it uh, as a more of a noun form, if you like. So, for practice, if you want to get uh, good at identifying these forms, one of the things you need to do is to um, practice identifying the forms from a page of Hebrew text. It can be any page. You'll find you'll generally find these are quite uh, common forms anyway, and see how many you can uh, just take a look through the page, see how many you can isolate on a page. Something else you can do, which I've done on a number of occasions is simply try to write out the conjugation from the rules we've just learned to see if uh, how well you know them and then check that against the verb tables um, either that I've handed you or something that you've seen in a book somewhere and something else you need to bear in mind is that the ein vav and the ein yud are sometimes interchangeable I've mentioned some of the changes but again you'd really need to turn to the um, relevance chapter in the book in order to um, isolate exactly where the differences are. The information I've given you really will cover the majority of situations that you are likely to come across. Just to finish, I've got some common Ein Vav Ein Yud words uh, to, to uh, memorize, to add to your vocabulary. I've got Gur to uh, sojourn, stay a while, Kun to be firm, or to be established or fixed, mul to circumcise, mut to die, nus to flee, run away from, bo to come, it's a very common one, or to enter, sur to turn aside, rum to raise up or exalt, shuv to return, to come back to something, Roots to run away. Kum to arise, to get up from a sitting position or a lying position to standing. Shir, which actually means to sing. And the last one here, gil, which means to rejoice. Let's go back and I'll leave you here again. Just with these uh, three points that I'd happened to mention before. And that ends this particular recording. And in our next recording, we're going to look at the pei yud, va, uh, pei yud, pei vav uh, verbs, if you like. And we'll uh, discuss, and that's going to be the last, I think, of the week verbs we cover via recording.